I was really interested, I heard you talking about, uh, about change and the idea that we are all refugees and that we all move even if we don't actually move, if we stay still, because of course time passes, the world changes. And this struck me as particularly relevant when we think about some of the things that are happening in this country at the yeah. moment with people dealing with the idea of Brexit. Mm. And this idea of um, Britishness mm. that people are wrestling with seems to me to be based on a very old-fashioned idea of values that maybe didn't exist anymore or an idea of the past that was probably a bit of a myth uh, and, uh, and a, maybe a group of people who consider themselves natives who've yeah. been here all this time and they don't want anything to change is it perhaps true that things have changed around them and that they just haven't realized or, or that, that that is just part of, of life well i think you know um I mean, I have I have strong views on on Brexit. Uh, um, uh, I'm not a fan, uh, not because I'm not uncritical of the European Union, but because I think there's a kind of potentially xenophobic um, uh, nativist tendency embedded within much of the Brexit movement that uh, uh, I think is misguided. I think there's a generational divide as well. You see, we see younger people disproportionately voting against Brexit and older people voting for Brexit. Um, uh, sometimes I wonder whether the referendum shouldn't have been weighted by the amount of years that you would experience uh, the consequences of that referendum. And so somebody aged 80 would have you know, five or six years worth of votes and somebody aged 18 yeah. would presumably have 60 or 70 years worth of votes. Uh, but it didn't work out that way. Um, you know, in a sense, the generation that's longing most for Brexit, in any case, um, is nearing the great Brexit in the sky. Yeah. You know, as, as we all are, slowly, but, uh, but they, uh, as a generation, uh, more rapidly. Yeah. Now, all of that said, I think we make a mistake when we imagine that people who feel that they are becoming foreign in the place where they have grown up um, are necessarily racist or chauvinistic or xenophobic. Um, uh, there is a migration that occurs with time. If you were born in London 80 years ago and you live in London today, still in the same house, um, everything has changed. Uh, uh, you might very well feel quite foreign as you step out of your door. Uh, but for me, the opportunity that comes from that isn't that we should say the person who um, migrates geographically and the person who migrates temporally, you know, the one who suffers a loss of their country or place of origin because they'd have to leave, uh, and the one who suffers it because time passes and it changes, are different, actually. I think they're experiencing quite a similar narrative of loss. Um, and so um, rather than setting them up in opposition to each other, if we can say that, acknowledge that there's a similarity um, to, the, to the pain uh, and, and sorrow, um, it might well be that what offers solace to one will also offer solace to another, which is to say, uh, beginning to articulate a kind of more optimistic vision of the future that isn't shrouded in nostalgia. Um, I think that, that an emotional violence occurs in the moment of migration as well. And if that's ignored, that trauma can echo forward across generations. You know, you can have second and third generation migrants who um, are still feeling much of the emotional pain that was experienced by their parents or grandparents who feel that they abandoned their own parents. Um, uh, and, and that has to be looked at. But similarly, the person who feels that the country is changing around them, their country is changing around them, um, needs to be um, considered sympathetically. And, uh, and, and I think in both cases, starting to imagine a more equal world uh, and a more compassionate world uh, is, is part of the answer as opposed to this um, us versus them othering, which is what we see a lot of today.